So as you probably noticed as he was walking, right, we do have this slant happening down on this right shoulder. And so this could be a potential lateral drag pattern where we'd see the slant down and then basically a collapse into here. We can actually check the inferior border of the scapula. He is lower on the scapula. He just has a lot less trap engagement on the right side. Typically when we have less trap engagement, I tend to see a right superior posterior occiput, which puts tension on the spinal accessory nerve. And when I see that tension happen, and this is like where we get disengagement of the trapezius muscle. So we see the, the sloping, right, of the right neck shoulder, that you're gonna see less fullness, right, in this area, because we have less trapezius engagement. Um, and it's kind of continuing all the way down. So you see it happen here, but you also see a little lower here on the pec. And so we wanna see um, what it's like to get that hooked up. So go ahead and lay face up to start. So Jason did have a shoulder injury where we had a tear in the right shoulder. So, but I've also been taking care of him for a while. So I'm familiar with the pattern. Today we're gonna see if we can go deeper in helping un unwind. So is there a potential that there is an anchor in the abdomen? Bring your hands here actually for me, up here. There we go. So meaning that if we're seeing, you know, this, this right side drop, shoulder drop, this right lower pec, is it also being represented in the rib cage? So getting the uh, anterior inferior border of the rib cage as it approximates to eh, the ASIS. And so you can see, I don't know if you can get that angle, it's a slight decrease of space on the right side. So it's like right shoulder drop, right rib cage drop, slight decrease in space here. And so is there an anchor point? Is there a quadratus limborum spasm? Yeah, I mean, definitely feel that tighter on the right side. And then we can go into, is that have any relationship to the psoas or to the iliacus, more the iliacus, so iliacus is deep on the inside border, right, of the ilium here, and that tissue just pushing back at me. Mm. Versus I can get my thumb in just slightly more here. So when I go to this side, I can get my thumb in the crease better, right? When I go to this side, that tissue pushes right back at me. I can't get my thumb in. Now, that's gonna be easier to do when the knees are bent. Let's go ahead and bend the other knee too. Because when the legs are long on a table, it puts everything in tension, and everything in tension is kind of hard to go in into. But it's still there even with the knees bent. And so is it possible that what we're seeing on this side starts from an anchor here? So let's go ahead and start to unwind. Again, a lot of people would go right to the shoulder, to the scapula, potentially to the occiput. But we're wanting to help break patterns which will require you know, it's a deeper level of connection. How much time are you allowing yourself with your people? I see multiple people in 15 minute blocks on average. And so finding the time and the space to give yourselves more time, you know, whatever that looks like. Specifically, if you're finding that somebody is staying stuck in a pattern and they're ready to break through evolve hill. So we're just continuing. I'm basically at traction, all the pressure tension that was in the iliacus, I've now traction it up the system, connecting it more to the psoas. Now the psoas and the iliacus are continu continuous in a fascial web. That's why they often call it the iliopsoas. There you feel that. Good breathe. So what I don't want to do here is lengthen here and then have him contract here. So to help with that, I'm just going to have you put this hand underneath your head. Good. So now as I go here, think about the lengthening of your right mid to upper rib cage, like kind of through the armpit. Good. So we want to lengthen here while lengthening here. Good. That's actually releasing pretty good now. Mm hmm Okay, now bring this hand to match this one, and we can recheck. Okay. So good unwinding there. Let's see if we have any change happen so far. 
<laughs> okay. So where we're starting to see some change, we're starting to see some lift here, some lift here. We still have the slope and the disengagement here. You know, so how much of that is due to the potential of the shoulder injury versus other things that we might be able to help with. And so just keep standing there. I want you to breathe length into, yeah, your right, from your right hip up to your rib cage. And then I want you to go ahead and shrug both shoulders up to ears. So instead of back, shrug them up. There we go. Breathe here. Good, breathe. Good, breathe. So I'm checking in position here. Good, mm -hmm. and relax the shoulders. Okay, right there, breathe. So in this position, we do start to see some fullness come back in the trap, right? And so this position, you're gonna get slight, some slight engagement of the SEM, but there's also potential of getting some of the trapezius activation. All right, um, just have a seat for me. So that's the position that it would look like if we were to drop occiput from the superior position down, moving posterior to anterior, superior to inferior, dropping down this way. Let's make sure that I can properly do this in this position. So we're gonna drop here. There it goes, perfect. Okay. Good, breathe. Bring your head down here, breathe. Good, breathe. Good, okay, stand up again. All right, shrug and release. Good, I'm going to test something. Breathe. Breathe. Good, I want you to imagine that right shoulder is floating up as they're bringing tension down your left, left side. You can let that left oblique kick in a little bit. Good, breathe. So since we have like that right lateral drag collapse, we're just going into the other position, into a left collapse. Good, up. Oh. You a little lightheaded? A little bit. A little bit, uh-huh. So we're getting closer. Good. All right. So now I'm gonna do that with a supinated palm. So go ahead, right there, breathe. Crunch into this left side now. Good, so I want you to feel this engage. I want you to feel this engage. So lean slightly back right there. Good, so we got engagement from the QL, slight engagement of the oblique, and then slight engagement on the left aspect of the posterior chain. Good, breathe. Good, now I want your right arm to go up over the head and get that side body reach. So you're lengthening on the left side. Good, compressing on this left. Good, standing straight up. Breathe. Mm -hmm. Good, breathe again. So what you're gonna see is he inflates left upper chest pretty well right side of the chest. You're not really seeing much engagement now. So now I'm looking at the rib cage. Go ahead and breathe. So now that leads me to see how are these ribs doing? Okay. Breathe. Out. Oh. Right there for that one. Mm -hmm. So this is the fourth rib and it's anterior inferior. So we want to breathe that, bring that up. Go ahead and step forward for me. So we're gonna get him in that left lateral lean. There we go. Okay. Breathe again. 
there you go. And breathe. Good. Balancing out now, a lot better. So for him, and something that would be really good is, is that training of getting that left side contraction. So really focusing on those left lateral bends. Um, yeah, and you could, you could start like layering the anchoring of that. So you could feel it in the oblique, right? So go ahead and just do a left lateral lean, get into the oblique. Good. And then if you, now from the oblique engagement, if you go slightly back, sending the hips forward, you'll start to feel the balance between those two, yeah? Yeah. Okay, good. Now if you lift your right arm up, I want you to feel the lengthen of the ribs. And then I actually want you to get a slight posterior rotation there, boom. But keep this engaged, keep this engaged, lengthening through here, bringing what was anterior inferior up on that right side. Good, stand up. Let's recheck again, breathe. It's probably the best we got so far. Yeah. Okay, let's go and go face down. Yeah, so multi-layered cueing, right? And kind of seeing where that, that pattern's originating from. And then what are the things that we can facilitate, but what are all the, also the, the cues that we can give in their daily life to kind of help that continue to unwind? Counterclockwise torque, right here. There we go. So you see what I'm doing? I'm actually tensioning, poking into that trap, pointing at activation here. And then from this one, we're lengthening and then causing that compression going into the left side because it's been collapsed on the right. So we gotta kind of retrain the body to be able to engage this, not just lengthen this, but to engage this. So I want you to push against my hands here with your muscles. Mm -hmm. Let it go. There we go. Breathe. There we go. How are we feeling? Good. You're feeling all right, huh? All right. Conditioning the body and retraining that uh -huh. registers. So both arms over the head. Breathe length. I want you to slightly lean to the left side. Good. Good. And then standing tall. Let the arms go down. Shrug. Relax. There you go. Beautiful. Closest we've gotten so far. All right, brother. We can't. We continue. You. So you have exercises to do on your own, right? Yeah. Those shrugs actually are really good for you. Okay. Um, but your your pattern to shrug is to shrug really back and have your head forward. Keep your chin retracted. Shrug your shoulders to your ears. And this is just helping retrain that trap that's been disengaged for a while. If you wanted to do single sides, you could. Um, but I think it's I think it's healthy for right now. Just if you're doing no weight, just to do both and going straight up if you can. And then so no roll, just straight up. And what will, yes, so just go straight up, boom. And then what could help is a left side farmer carry. Mm. So if you do both, it's okay, but I would bring a little bit more left side because I want you to get used to going ahead and having a little bit more weight that you're loading on the left side. Okay. Um, and then that side body, that side body bend. But the, so the, the pattern for you, which was super helpful, is to go into the side bend, first engage the oblique, and then lean, just leaning back slightly, you'll get a little bit of the QL and part of the posterior chain on the left side. And then because this rib cage is dropped anterior inferior, and it's like ribs three, four, from there, you can rotate back. You could even bring your arm back. You could elevate to get that trap engagement. Like that. Oh. <sighs> All right, let's go back a little bit. <clears throat> I'm gonna show, some things that I've been doing on my own, I haven't really done with people yet. I just do it in my own body and I kind of like, 
almost pass out all the time, <laughs> is um, the, a level of isometric contraction you can get in the unwinding of a posture. And so what we wanna work with is first this left lateral lean. From that left lateral lean, I want you to start to engage the oblique. Okay, and then I want you to lean your body back. Okay, but then I want you to find the equal balance between those two. Can you feel that? Yep. Okay, so from right there, now I want you to keep this engagement and I want you to slightly rotate the right side posterior. Boom, from there, keep this engaged, bring the arm up. And then I want you to actually tilt your head uh, this way. Boom, and engage that trap as much as you can. So engage the trap, engage here, good. Keep squeezing, five, four, three, two, one, release. Come up neutral and breathe. Let both shoulders elevate. Inhale, elevate. Exhale, release. Good. So we can keep training that. Sometimes you gotta again, activate through like almost a, a maximal muscular contraction, isometric squeeze. Okay. And then it kind of starts to reset the yeah. system. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome, Bob.